You got a tailgate and some wine. That's the makings of a good country song. Our next guest has been a part of the Nashville music scene for a decade, writing songs for and touring with artists like Carly Pierce, For King and Country, and Dwight Yoakam. Recognized by Rolling Stone, CMT, and Spotify, she says she puts the bougie in the back roads. A perfect example, she rang in the new year with fried chicken and champagne. Hannah Ellis is set to release her debut album, That Girl, this Friday. That Girl joins us this morning to tell us about her journey to this monumental week. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am doing well. I'm thinking about fried chicken and champagne right now. All right. I mean, you pulled that up and it made me want it too. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll do, we'll, since it's breakfast time, we'll do chicken and waffles. Uh, you grew up That's in a small town, Kentucky, and you say your parents taught you to choose joy. What do you remember about your childhood mm -hmm. that makes you say that? Man, you know, I think that my parents just, they always instilled in us that we could truly do whatever, whatever we wanted with our lives, me and all of my siblings, they just never held anything back from us. If my sister said, I want to go and be in politics and she moved to Washington DC and they were like, go get it girl. And then I said, I want to go be a country music singer. I'm going to move to Nashville. And they said, go get it girl. And I think it's just really incredible to have parents that they know that you're special. They treat you like you're special. And you know, after time, you start to believe it. Yeah. You know, okay, I want your next country song to be Go Get It, Girl. Go Get It, Girl. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So obviously growing up in, in Kentucky, there, you know, country music was all around you. And a lot of people grow up around it. It's all around them, but they don't choose it as a career. What was it that you connected right. to? Man, you know, growing up, I was just always just so enamored with the females of country music when I was a child. Martina McBride and Faith Hill and Shania Twain and Jody Messina. But then when Taylor Swift came on the scene, it was like this aha moment. I was like, someone is speaking straight to me that's my age about my life. And then I was like, I think I could do that. I think I could talk to people like that. I think I could make people feel seen and heard and less alone in their good and bad moments. And that's kind of what I've taken into my entire career. Yeah, you know, there are, there are times along your life that, that encourage you, you know, we call them uh, God winks, that give you God winks as you're doing the right thing. At 11 years old, you sang in a contest, Martina McBride's A Broken Wing. You had your red leather pants and your cowboy hat there. And so that gets you in an experience of obviously being up on stage, but also competing with other folks. Right, and you know, as, as you just mentioned, a God wink, Back in 2021, I got to go on tour with Martina McBride and she was so kind and so welcoming to my mom and I. And I got the chance to tell her, hey, you were such an important part of my journey into country music. I mean, you were the first, she was the first secular <laughs> album that I purchased as like a 10 or 11 year old. And so it was just really incredible getting to, um, getting to go on tour with her and have that full circle moment. Yeah, it's interesting you say secular album because, you know, a lot of us grew up with gospel as well. But, you know, oftentimes That's right. gospel is about life and challenges. But what is country music oftentimes about life and challenges? Just a little bit different right. spin on it. Um, you know, we, we talk about exactly inspiration right. coming from everywhere. Uh, Hannah Montana changed your life. There is something about uh, the message <laughs> in one of her movies where you were like, this is it. This is for me. That's right. I did. I, I, I went to the movie. I took my little sister. I was like 18. I was about to graduate high school. Already had a scholarship to college. And, you know, I thought I had this plan for my life. And I went and saw that movie. And I was so moved by it. I, I really felt like Jesus was calling me into music. I left. I'm crying. I'm calling my parents. I'm like, I'm supposed to sing for a living. I think that's my calling in life. And they were like, Okay, let's talk about it. And then and then we did. And then we just been chasing it down ever since. Yeah, you moved to Nashville. You do what you have to do. You know, we've, we've interviewed everybody on this show. You know, Garth Brooks, Trisha Yearwood, uh, so many people. And, right. and they talk about just when you're passionate about something, that doesn't mean that it comes to you easy. You just do what you have to do. You self-financed right. your EP. Uh, you went on The Voice in 2015. And, you know, every yeah. time I see that show, we're sitting there with our fingers crossed that the chairs turn or one chair turns. Right. No, no chairs turned for you, but that didn't defeat you. Yeah, you know, it was kind of, again, another, I love the God wink thing. I think that's such a fun thing. We call it sneaky Jesus, me and my friends. <laughs> 
But uh, I had actually been, um, I had actually gotten a phone call earlier in that week, right before my audition, about signing a publishing deal. But because of the way the contracts with the show work, if I had made it onto a team, I would not have been allowed to sign a publishing deal for at least six months. So it was kind of um, a silver lining, if you will, because I knew, oh, wait, if I don't make a team, then I'm going to go back to Nashville and most likely sign this publishing deal. Ah, there you go, Sneaky Jesus, like you just said. Uh, That's right. <laughs> you, you spent a decade touring and 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 writing, and uh, you know all of that is just great stuff for the resume. Uh, you have your debut album, That Girl. Tell us what went into this. Yeah, I mean, a lot of heart, sweat, and tears. You know, I think that it's just been such a labor of love from my co-writers to my family supporting me to my label beyond in every way to make me feel like a star and to treat me like one as well and i think that these songs are going to really touch people i i believe in this project i believe in this record and I'm excited for people to finally get to hear the whole thing. Yeah, and they'll hear things like Too Much and Not Enough, one of your songs, Karma on the Rocks. I just love the titles of country songs and wine country. <laughs> uh, you've also partnered with Lucchese, so you got a boot deal. That's right. That You got to wear them fancy boots, girl. You can't be the bougie country girl and not have the bougie boots. <laughs> All right. Uh, so from my mouth to God's ears, I hope one day you play at the world's largest stock show and rodeo right here in Houston. And when you do, this is what we tell every up and coming star. When you do and we call you after you won all your big awards, don't act like you don't know us. Yes. All right. Oh, I wouldn't do it, Deborah. All Thank right. you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hannah. Best of luck. Thank you. All right. Hannah Ellis' debut album, That Girl, will be available everywhere. Music is streamed or sold this Friday. For more information on Hannah, visit GreatDayHouston.com. And stay tuned. Later in the show, we'll give you another scoop of Hannah's music. We spoke to country singer Hannah Ellis earlier in the show. We leave you with a montage of her songs, which can be found on her upcoming debut album, That Girl. Have a great day, everybody. Country care, country care.